following episode describes in detail reported speculation and alleged whereabouts of a missing person and unproven reports of actions taken by family members, friends, and other relations. Listener discretion is advised. It's been nearly five decades since 24-year-old Vicki Lee Lamberton vanished from Worcester, leaving her husband and a rumored love affair behind. At the time of her disappearance, Vicki and her husband, Professor Lowell Lamberton, were in a shaky relationship. Their marriage was on the rocks. The couple had been separated for about six weeks when Vicki called Lowell uh, one winter evening in February 1974. They reportedly discussed getting back together and fixing their marriage. They even made plans to go to dinner. Vicki said she would call Lowell as soon as she returned to Worcester from a weekend in Maine with one of her girlfriends. But the call from Vicki never came. No one has heard from her since that night in February 1974. And it took over 35 years for a missing persons report to be filed with the Worcester Police Department. Unsolved Worcester is brought to you by the following sponsors. Follow the crowd through the doors of Donut Homies and say hi to Haley Noel, the donut queen of Worcester's Canal District. This month, the specialty donut shop features special flavors like chocolate-covered strawberry and red velvet creme brulee. Donut Homies is open inside the Worcester Public Market at 160 Green Street every Wednesday through Sunday at 11 a.m. Online ordering with delivery and pickup options is available at DonutHomies.com. Follow Donut Homies on Facebook and Instagram for monthly menu drops, specials, and more. Donut Homies, everything sweeter with the homies. Welcome to Unsolved Worcester. I'm your host, Dan Yeager. In today's episode, we explore the unsolved missing person case of 24-year-old Vicki Lee Lamberton, the first of 10 Unsolved Missing Persons Cases stories we will share this season of Unsolved Worcester. Vicki Lee Lamberton was a psychology student at Assumption College in Worcester when she went missing in early 1974. Unsolved Worcester will take a deep dive every Tuesday and Thursday into unsolved murders and missing persons cases under investigation by the Worcester Police Department's detective unit. We will be looking to the past, to missing persons cases that date as far back as the early 1970s and 80s. The most important question this season is, where are they? The approach to Unsolved Worcester is this. Shine a light on each of these cases. Put a life behind each missing person's name. Provide a timeline of events and important details. And ask questions that still need to be answered. Our goal is to remind residents of the Worcester area, both past and present, that there are dozens of unsolved homicides and missing person cases that need resolution. We hope we can be of the spark needed to solve the case. Vicki Lee Lockwood was born in October 1949 and grew up on a farm in Harper, Kansas, a small city with a population of just over 1,300 people. Harper is roughly 50 miles southwest of Wichita, about a four-hour drive northeast to Kansas City. In the mid-1960s, Vicki traveled north to attend Union College in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's where she met her husband, Lowell Lamberton. A professor 
at the college. The two fell in love and they moved to Worcester together in 1968 and married in 1969. Vicki received a second degree from Clark University in Worcester and earned her master's degree in psychology at Assumption College. Vicki and Lowell lived with Vicki's brother Robert on Westbrook Road in Worcester in a quiet, secluded neighborhood surrounded by Flag Street, Pleasant Street, and Salisbury Street. About five years after moving to Worcester while working toward her master's degree in 1973, it's believed Vicki started having an affair with her Assumption College psychology professor. In an interview with the Telegram and Gazette in 2013, Vicki Lee Lamberton's friend Ann Lawson said at some point in 1973, in the short time she had been separated from her husband Lowell, Vicki had moved into an apartment on the ground level of 74 Beaver Street behind Clark University in Worcester's Columbus Park neighborhood. Ann's apartment was on the same floor as Vicki's. Anne said she remembered Vicky moving out of the apartment at some point, but couldn't pinpoint when. Shortly after moving out of the Beaver Street apartment in February 1974, Vicky had called her husband Lowell to reconcile. As we mentioned earlier, Vicky told Lowell she was heading to Maine for the weekend with a girlfriend. However, multiple reports following Vicky's disappearance tell a different story. There are reports that Vicky's friends believe she was going away with her Assumption College professor, allegedly Dr. Roger Barker, on a weekend ski trip to Colorado. The Assumption College professor would later tell police he had no recollection of taking Vicky to Colorado with him. However, according to another report from the TNG in 2012, Likely after Vicky had moved out of the Beaver Street apartment and then vanished, Lowell and Vicky's family members found Vicky's possessions in the professor's garage. Another report online goes into further detail about Vicky and Barker's alleged relationship. Supposedly, Barker had stored Vicky's possession in his garage after he helped Vicky move out of her home on Westbrook Road. It's alleged that Vicky and Barker would later go to New York City in early 1974, just weeks before Vicky vanished, so she could apply to Columbia University for her psychology doctorate. Lowell Lamberton believed then that Vicky and Barker were having an affair, especially after Lowell and Vicky's brother Robert ran into Vicky with Barker at a Worcester shopping mall in early 1974. After Vicky went missing, according to reports, police went to Barker at Assumption and found out that Barker had been in Vail, Colorado on a ski trip right around the same time Vicky had disappeared. Coming up next, we'll share the whispers behind the alleged weekend trip in Colorado. When Vicki Lee Lamberton didn't return home the weekend following a long phone call attempting to reconcile with her estranged husband Lowell, her husband visited Assumption College to find Roger Barker, a psychology professor Vicki was allegedly having an affair with. According to a report, staff members at the school told Lowell that Barker was supposedly spending the weekend in Vail, Colorado on a ski trip. Barker was supposed to return to school the Monday after his ski trip, but he allegedly was hospitalized with pneumonia and wouldn't return for another two weeks. Barker's wife, however, supposedly was in Vail with her husband for the weekend and had already returned to Massachusetts. 
The following month, March 1974, Lowell allegedly visited Barker's home to ask him where Vicky was. While he insisted that he didn't know Vicky well, Barker reportedly admitted he was storing Vicky's belongings in his garage. Barker also supposedly told Lowell he believed that Vicky had been seeing another man, another local college professor. According to a report, some of Vicky's family members even believed she had moved in with another man, leaving Lowell and Barker behind. In 1975, a year after she went missing, Vicky's family collected all of her belongings from Barker's garage. At the start of this episode, we mentioned that a missing persons report for Vicki Lee Lamberton wasn't filed with the Worcester Police Department until February 4, 2010. There's really only one reason why the report took over 35 years to be filed. Lowell Lamberton thought his wife had really just up and left, that her disappearance was her decision. When contacted by the Telegram and Gazette in 2012, Lowell remained convinced that Vicky was still alive. Apparently, Vicky had told Lowell many times that she would like to start her life over, go somewhere no one knew who she was. And following her disappearance, Lowell and some of Vicky's family members believed that's exactly what she did. And so they didn't file a missing persons report to the Worcester PD. A Worcester police detective told the TNG that in 2012 that authorities didn't truly know if Vicky had disappeared, wanted to start a new life, or had been killed. There are multiple reports, including in the Telegram and Gazette, indicating that Vicky was always trying to escape or wanted to be someone else. She apparently told people she was from Colorado even though she grew up on a wheat farm in Kansas. Lowell told the Telegram that Vicky even once considered changing her skin color to appear African American. In the years after her disappearance, several strange things happened that we would be remiss not to mention. Shortly after Vicky went missing, a farmer living next to Vicky's family farm in Kansas received a phone call. The caller mentioned that Vicky had moved to Europe. But after an investigation, police couldn't find any proof of her traveling overseas. Vicky's brother, Brent Lockwood, told the telegram he believes Vicky may have been the person who placed the call to the nearby farm. Following the phone call, Lowell Lamberton received an acceptance letter for Vicky from New York University. And police say there have been reports of multiple sightings of Vicki Lee Lamberton over the years. In 2011, according to the Telegram and Gazette, a WPD detective spoke with a woman in Missouri with the same name, a similar birth date and social security number. But she successfully convinced the detective they weren't the same person. According to another report, Vicky's social security number hasn't been used since 1974, and her driver's license hadn't been renewed since. Vicki Lee Lamberton is listed in the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. When she was last seen, Vicky was about 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighed around 110 pounds. She has brown eyes and light brown hair. If she's still alive today, she would be 73 years old. Thank you for listening. I'm Dan Yeager. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please consider clicking the like button for us. And if you subscribe, the next episodes will show up in your feed. Click the bell on the right and you'll get a notification of when the next episode is ready. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. We do read them all and respond to as many as we can. 
Anyone with information about the whereabouts of Vicki Lee Lamberton are asked to contact the Worcester Police Detective Bureau at 508-799-8651 or send an anonymous text to 274-637. Write TIP WPD plus your message or send an anonymous web-based message at worcestermagovernor forward slash police. Come back on Thursday. Season 3 of Unsolved Worcester continues with part 1 of our two-part episode special on the disappearance of 23-year-old Sabrina Hathaway. Sabrina was last heard from on December 20th, 2014. Be sure to visit Unsolved Worcester on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Unsolved Worcester. Listen to all episodes for free at unsolvedworcester.com and on podcast streaming platforms including Spotify, Apple, Audible, and more. Special thanks to Worcester Public Library, the Worcester Police Department, the City of Worcester, Ron Scott at New England Sky Picks, and our sponsors for making this possible. Information on the disappearance of Vicki Lee Lamberton was gathered from multiple resources, including the Telegram and Gazette, the Charlie Project, WhereaboutStillUnknown.com, and the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, and more. The Unsolved Worcester podcast music is provided by Tom LaBelzik of the Worcester Jazz Collective. This episode of Unsolved Worcester is written and produced by Pat Sargent. Drone footage by New England Skypix. Videography and editing by Colin Turner. Victim images are courtesy of the Worcester Police Department. Sponsorship information announcer Chandler Walsh. Be sure to check out the video for this episode with exclusive aerial views and more on our Unsolved Worcester YouTube page. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't miss another episode. Click the notification button to get alerts when new episodes of Unsolved Worcester drop. This program is supported in part by a grant from the Worcester Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts. To find out more about how National Endowment for the Arts grants impact individuals and communities, visit www.arts.gov.